Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long time coming, but she's here. Please welcome the beautiful and talented Pearl Tusi. Dude, I can't get over your house, man. Your house is fucking amazing. Welcome. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. How do you get a house like this? And you didn't have to sleep with anyone. I didn't have to fuck no niggas. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, you save. Oh. You save. So, well, and you dream. I think what's really cool is that, like, I got the first place I got was small, really close to my kid's school and stuff. Where was that? And then right up the street. Oh, okay. <laughs> Morningside, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I belong to this area, North Queen. Yeah. And um, I just, I have three dogs. So my whole life, I've always wanted to, like, make sure my dogs have, like, a beautiful garden and, you know, have a good time. Also, obviously, for the kids. But the kids were doing fine anyway. They're always at school. And then I started looking Mm. This time last year, I was actually applying at the bank for this house this time last year. Yeah. And then it came through and I took all my savings, put them in. And then next thing I knew, Corona. Oh, shit. I was so yeah. stressed. I'm going to pay for the bond. <laughs> so, um, but it's, wor- it's worked out quite well. Where did you first stay when you came to Joburg? Four ways. Four ways? Far away. So you've always been uh, uh, soft, huh? I stayed in Norwood. Norwood? Once. Yeah, yeah. Norwood is like a creative, like dope place. But I stayed in someone's cottage. Yeah. And then I ended up renting the house because my sisters and Nanny and Tando were there. Then the owner moved to the cottage, so the rent went up. You stayed in a cottage? I've stayed in a cottage. You fucking kidding I me. I was staying in that person's house and then I didn't have food. Yeah. But I had a house to sleep yeah. in. And yeah. I had a car with petrol in it. And my daughter and the nanny had food. I used to wake up to this girl, because she used to still cook in the house. Elmi, what up? <laughs> uh, and Elmi used to come in or she'd have like a dinner party with her friends and my and my family and I would eat the leftovers. Yeah. Like Your story is amazing, man. Hmm. It's like, well, I don't know if that's amazing, but it sucked at the time. But like I remember in the mornings, we'd wake up to the smell of toast. I've told the story many times. Sorry if you've heard it. Um, like I could, and we could tell you like what was on the toast, mm. like just from the smell in our bedrooms. Yeah. And then like we'd slowly come through, wait for her to finish, you know, not to be too awkward, and then eat whatever was left, just because we needed to save money. My sister needed transport to go to Varsity. I needed um just to have petrol to keep finding work to pay the bills. Sorry, that's my bird. Sorry, guys. Yeah, and um. Oh, if you can hear it. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was it was pretty tough, you know, because my dad couldn't really support us. I remember once we were so broke, we had to ask our grandmother for money. And she was like, she was earning pension. She sent us like 500 bucks. Yeah, she was so stressed. And my mother's best friend, because my mother had passed away. And luckily I had one of my mother's best friend's numbers. And, and she sent us money. Um... Like, I think it added up to like 1,200, but fuck, we had food mm. and petrol. Mm. And I think I paid Tando's like crash fees or something, I remember. What jobs did you start doing when you, when you got this side? Um, the first job I got was a job called iCrew. So I worked with the lady we, we lived with at some stage because she was looking to make extra money. So she wanted someone to rent. And I was working with them making this kids show. So I was translating English and Afrikaans into Zulu. Um, And then um, initially I was just the presenter. Then I started helping with production and I was still modeling. Um, And then the first acting gig I got was Ladies Number One Detective Agency with Jill Scott. Like For real? Jill Scott, Anika Nani Rose, Desmond Dube, Kenneth Nkowasi, Brenda Ngawoli. I think Zetu Zomo was also in it. And then um, I did Zone 14. And then just before Zone 14, I did RGB. Yeah. So it was just like straight up like a hustle. Like When did uh, you do the Rema job? The what? Rema, the church. Oh, how do you know about that? <laughs> did you, did you, were you going to church? <laughs> no. <laughs> that wasn't a job. I wasn't getting paid. <laughs> but what's interesting about that, there was a guy called Gift and Jonathan, whom I still um, am in contact with. So I was going to church and then we met them and I met them and they were like, hey, you should do our like links, like, you know, for church stuff. I was like, hey, cool. See, like, guys, you need to start where you're at in life. Don't wait like 
for an SABC or for a DSTV or for anyone to give you Netflix. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to drop too many, but no, I'm joking. Um, I I was there and they were like, hey, you should do our like Raymond News. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, okay, oh cool. Everyone at church is gonna know me dope. And um, yeah, I started doing Raymond News. Then I didn't have a car. I think I got into an accident. It's a long story that involves other people's names. So I'll stay out of that one. But I didn't have a car. So to get to auditions, I used to call Gift and Jonathan. And one of them would bring Gift's car to me. Shout out Gift. And Gift would, I would then drive the person back. There was no Uber then. I can. Mm, mm, mm. I'd drive the person back to church after they've picked me up, go to my audition, go back to church, fetch someone, whoever was willing, and then they drop me off and take the car back. Yeah. So that's why I'm very, um, my friends are very concerned about my very, like I, I actually borrowed my house to a friend during the corona moment because times were tough and it was still locked down. It was hard to find a place. I was like, oh, my house is still empty. I'm not ready to move in, go stay. Mm. And uh, I borrowed my car out, like just because that's the type of energy that helped me get to where I am today is like people just being giving of, of their possessions um, and kind and trusting and taking risks. I could have crashed the car, you know mm. what I mean? Um, and he was, he was working at church. He's not like bawling, you know? And um, yeah, so I, I kind of, I try and keep that energy going. Yeah. Do you think your driving force is because of your daughter, man? Like, you know, that's where you get this this focus. Yeah, in. definitely, definitely. I mean, initially it was just Tando, um, and just to kind of, I've always had this thing of like, I don't want my daughter to wish someone else was her mother because I think when I was growing up, there was a point where, when I understood, when I become, when I became exposed to, you know, like a cheese school, and I was like, oh, why can't my parents do one? Why can't my parents like, my parents can't do this? My, and I kind of had this kind of resentment towards my parents. But like a deep love still, because I, I could tell they were doing their best. And then my mother passed away and, and, and. So I've kind of prepared my daughter for my absence, my permanent absence. Mm. Um, not like prepared her, like had a conversation. Okay, that's happened. But more like making sure she's going to be Sorted, fine. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Um and because that's uh, the thing, when you have kids, it's no longer about you, you know? Right. Yeah, right. changes you, your whole you life. Would know. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, guys, get life policies, bro. Like, when you get them young, it's like 300 Rand to like get like at least, I don't know, two or three, four million for your child. You know what I mean? Just so your child has something. And like, I've set up like a will, I'm trying to set up a trust now because I'm really worried about like my legacy, you know, mm. and my family. So that's what really drives me. Um, making my parents proud drives me a lot because, you know, there was a, there was a huge amount of sacrifice, uh, not just for me. Uh, making my family proud. Um, what do you but, mean? What kind of sacrifices? Like just my mom, you know, like the kind of arguments she would have with my dad for us to go to a specific school. Then my mom was gone. My father like working his ass off to pay the little bit of school fees. And the school actually gave him a little discount because now there were three girls at the school. Um, my dad like used to tell me like, nah, I don't get emotional, but my dad used to tell me hectic stories about like how he grew up. And also my dad once said, if I failed school, like I must go sleep in a bush. Like that shit was scary. So I was wow. like, I don't want to sleep in a bush. I better get my shit done. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's just, I've always been a driven, since I was a kid, I've always been a driven person. Mm. Like just wanting to succeed, wanting to do well. But I've never really wanted to hurt people on the way. So it's kind of like a really interesting line to, um, and I also don't want to get played with mm. while I'm at it. So it's a very interesting line to walk. How do you find? Can you take me back to the first day you found out that you were pregnant? Like, because you had a, you were pregnant oh, when you were young. It's a very easy story to tell. Yeah. I was at Vits, just started my drama school career. Yeah. And um, I was in a rocky relationship. And I remember I was actually single when I found out. So wow. it was whole week at Vits, like yeah. basically like. You know, the first week where they, like, orientate you and stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, mm, my period's been absent for a minute. I'm acting weird. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so, 
So I'd taken a gap year already. Yeah. And then I went to, they have a clinic there. Yeah. So I went to the clinic and I was like, oh, they were busy encouraging everybody to get tested. Okay. You know, uh, for HIV. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going, I still have my post Miss Teen mm-hmm. residue of like self right, not self righteousness, of like just being righteous and doing the right thing and leading the way for other people. And I get to the thing and I'm like, okay, I want to have my HIV test. We do it. I'm negative, killing the game. Then I'm like, uh, nurse, this is the other thing I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah. And then she's like, what? And I'm like, so what she had said, she said to me, um, if you find out you're HIV positive, what are you going to do? Mm, mm, I said, I ain't done nothing like messed up really I've only had like one partner in my entire life yeah. if anybody's got to change that guy <laughs> so I, nothing's gonna I'm not gonna do anything different I'm just gonna take care of myself better mm. I guess you know and then she was like wow that's the most mature shit I have ever heard like yeah, yeah. people come here and if they taste negative oh what if you taste negative are you gonna change anything because you were so nervous mm. I said nah I ain't changing shit I'm good mm. and then she was like wow people come here with like new year's resolutions you know Anyway, and then she thought I was pretty level-headed. She said, ah, I don't think you're pregnant, girl. But just to get, you know, some ease, or, yeah. you know what I mean? Some peace of mind. Uh, come back tomorrow. You have to do it tomorrow. Mm. I remember when I walked in, I sat down and I was like looking around in the room and I saw a poster saying, condom is free. <laughs> Pregnancy can cost you 40K in the first year. I said, oh. <laughs> I, said, I said, oh, no. And then I went in and... She was like, oh, it's positive. I said, what? I said, positive, like, it's a good thing. Like, I'm not pregnant or positive, like, I'm pregnant. Yeah. Because after you just tested for HIV the day before, your your mind gets confused, you know? Mm. She was like, you're pregnant. And I just started laughing. Like, this is fucking hilarious. You couldn't believe it. my first week of school. (laughs) I'm like, one of the most responsible people I know. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then I went home and I was pregnant. But I laughed. I had a girl there with me. Oh, shit. Girl, if you watch this, I'm sorry. But like, I know it was with a K. Yeah. And uh, she came with me and she was like my support. And um, it was it was an interesting, it was a very interesting day. Because like my whole world like shifted and... And I realized, I think life was, and the question was to tell the dad or not. Mm, mm, I was about to get to that. And I waited like two weeks because we were now like on this convo of like getting back together. But oh, like, okay. I didn't want to use that to be like, mm. oh, get back together with me. It was like a really weird feeling for me. And it was very early and I was trying to figure out what to do. I think I was pissed. I was like, should I even tell this nigga? Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then we got back together and I told him and... Yeah. Are you guys cordial right now? Yeah. I, in fact, I I would say I get along, along a lot better with the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Nasize. No, maybe, no, not that I don't get along with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But her and I have like a really dope relationship, yeah. especially right now. You know? how, do you, how do you meet him? When was the first time you met him? <sighs> he phoned me. You're kidding. How does he even fucking get your number? That's the worst part of the story. Yeah. I don't know if I should be telling the story. Ah, come on. It's just a number. He got it from his girlfriend. <laughs> his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> hey, what a gangster. <laughs> like, I think they were on an off moment or something, as he had told me. So he, he had already seen you, like? He saw me, like, on, like, a newspaper article or something. And, okay. And he said he wanted to like, do a photo shoot for them to do, like, I don't know, one of those, like, I don't know, bag page girls or whatever, like one yeah. of those moments. Yeah. And I found this out from the girl while we were working on a job together. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that's how you got my job. <laughs> and um, it was awkward because then her and I had to like part ways. No, she thought that mm. I was serving side chick vibes. I mm. said, oh, never that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I was never that girl in my whole life, not on purpose. Yeah. Well, not even by accident, as far as I know. But um, yeah, that's how we that's how we met. He phoned me. I was in school in the prefect's room. So when he called you, do you know who it is? Yeah, everyone knew who it was. Uh, okay. Uh, well, everyone. Yeah. And um, 
and the phone cut and I told my friends and they were like, what? And I was like, yeah. And yeah, and then we spoke nonstop for a while and then we started dating and then um, I was coming to Joburg, but I was like, I ain't staying with you. Like, my daddy will kill me. Yeah. And then the relationship had to become like super official. Like, mm. you know, all our vibes. Yeah. And um, I felt pregnant like a year after that. So it was in a way like no one was. I was nine. I was just about to turn 19 when I felt pregnant. And it was a really scary time. But my family wasn't like confused, mad or upset. Mm. Well, my mm. dad was disappointed. But he was at least things had been done properly. Mm. And it's crazy how when they find out, like, before the baby comes, they're disappointed. And then when she comes, it's like, wow, they they absolutely adore the kid. Yeah, no. You it know is. what I mean? My, my mom always used to say, you know? But um, my aunties used to say that, my auntie and my grandmother say, if your mother was here, this wouldn't even be your child. Yeah. Like, and she was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go to um, Vits with any famous people, like in your class? Atandwa. But Atandwa was like a year ahead. Masasa was also like a year ahead. Zetu was the same year. Um, who else? I went to... I, Loisa McDonald went to a brother's school. He's in the Queen. Yeah, he went Louis, to a, yeah, yeah. Like Pine Town Boys High School. I went to Pine Town Girls High School. Yeah. Um, Carol is a model and influencer now. Carol uh, Makatini. Some people know her. Um, oh shit! There's this one girl. Um, Jeez, that's a golden generation. She eh? she's Tiwa's girlfriend, and I know her name. Ah oh, man, my brain hates me. Yeah. Um, yeah, a couple of people. Cindy Mieza was once on your TV. Pearl, who is very close friends with the lady who created and directed Blood and Water. She's now working in like, I guess some of them are not famous. They're just in really strong positions mm. um, in the jobs that they do. So I clearly recognize those jobs, you know, sometimes just because there isn't a magnifying glass from the entire country on your job. I, yeah, don't, I don't see yeah. it as any less of a job. You 100%, know? Yeah. yeah. And then why do you drop out then? Drop out of varsity. Mm. You know, you know at Vitz University, mm. I hope you've changed this <laughs> shit. Because I offered to pay for the parking the teachers use that they was always empty underground. And y'all never let me do that. And it took like half an hour for me to find parking sometimes at Vitz. And I was pregnant, heavily pregnant. I had to piss like three times on the way to school from far away. Like, and because you know your bladder is suffering when you're pregnant. Yeah. And I think about July, I was just like, what am I doing? Like, I can always do this first year thing like everyone else the second year. And um, they wouldn't let me, then they would say, I'm not allowed to work while studying. And I was like, how am I supposed to feed this kid? Mm. And um, what else? What, you know, Vitz just made it extremely difficult to be an expecting parent. Um, and... And, and study at the same time. Yeah. Extremely difficult. Wow. In terms of the lectures, they were great, but it was impossible to, like logistically, in terms of being pregnant, um, the biggest issue was finding parking, walking there and back and whatever. It was, it was for me, it was, I was young, but once I was like seven months, six months in, it became, and the traffic on the way there, it was just unbearable. Now I was just like, and now my child might come out like, Mm. mad or something, you know what I mean? Like with problems because I'm frustrated and hardly getting sleep trying to get my work done. And um, I just thought to myself, you know, I'll never be pregnant again for the first time. Mm. I'll mm. never be having so my first do it child. Right. Yeah. So I've got to relax and enjoy this. Mm. Um, but I can do first year again easy, mm. you know. Have you ever thought about going back? I, I applied to go to UNISA this year. Oh, for real? Shit. Yeah, I did. I paid and everything. And then my dad passed away. And then lockdown happened. And then Queen Zona was happening. It was just... It was a lot. I just let it go. Yeah, I just said again, I can do it again next year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I just needed time to really let go of the thing of, of just this year and the, and the weight of it. You yeah, know? yeah. So fuck, dude. So you're a single mother. You dropped out of it. What the fuck? What now? Well, luckily her dad was still around. And then I was, and then literally three weeks after I gave birth, I was, I remember, I don't know which commercial I was shooting, but I shot a commercial where I had to run in that thick bush. It was three weeks after I gave birth, maybe six, but I think it was three. And um, I went straight back to work because, you know. So you had a plan. 
I was just modeling. Mm. You know what I mean? I was just modeling. And then I realized I had to grow. Modeling was not going to, the sustainability and whatever is just yeah, difficult, especially in this country. I wasn't going to grow any taller or get any skinnier and go overseas. Yeah. So I needed to chase other passions. What I actually wanted to be growing up was a wildlife vet. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And then I realized that wasn't going to happen. You must have loved uh, Tiger King. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it was entertaining. <laughs> As an animal lover, it was difficult to watch. So, uh, so um, yeah, I realized that I wasn't going to really go back to school school because of the child and what I actually wanted to study yeah. because of Tando well, after that given birth. And um, I just... I just jumped in the deep end. That's what I call it. I just literally jumped into the deep end. I auditioned for Zone 14 like five times. Wow. Before, by the time they were about to send out tapes again, they were like, we know this girl's coming. Like, just, you know, <laughs> just give her the thing. Just. Are you doing this by yourself or you got an agent or you just like... Um, I, initially, I had just my modeling agent mm. and then I spoke to them to speak to, to help me find an acting agent. Shout out to Carl Hiennes. Mm. I miss you. And he contacted Munyin Lee. I met up with Munyin. She loved me. And then she put me on, um, she put an audition for me on, um, she, put, she put me on tape auditioning for a guy called Tim, the director, for Ladies Number One, Number One Ladies Detective Agency. I got that. So I was going to Botswana. I was so excited. Wow. And then I did Zone 14 after the many auditions that I did. I made with Angus Gibson and Deji Makhraf and Debo Khmatlati. And um, they liked me, but, you know, if you were not going to cut it, you, you didn't get it. Yeah. And then finally I got the role. I even got to name the roles. And I named it after my mom. My mother's name, one of my mother's names is Samke Lisiwe. And so I called the character Sanke. Yeah. And it was like really cool because people, when people called me Sanke on the streets, like I wasn't like, ugh, my name is not Sanke. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> and um, I forgot what your question was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going. <laughs> uh, did, did, were you the face of Lovers Plus or something like that? You know, the Lovers Plus thing... You motherfuckers. No, it was like a thing I did because, again, the Miss S18 thing made me very, like, conscious of, mm. you know. Funny, you know I was still a virgin when I did that photo shoot? For real? Yeah. For Lovers Plus or Miss For Lovers Plus. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously for Miss SA because it was before. Miss S18. <laughs> yeah. And um, the money was decent at the time. And then the contract was for a couple of, I think it was four or five years, maybe three. So you were the face of the condom? I don't know, it's called it the face. I was a model. You know oh, what I mean? Okay, like okay. there was another guy as well on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Clearly, no one wants to remember him. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what the hell. He was so cute. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then a few years later, I was just like, guys, the contract is over. Mm. I know you guys are a non-government organization. Mm. I think they're an NGO. I don't know if they're an NPO. And um, get the shit off the shelves and pay me. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Yeah. I had to fight with them too. Because I think as they saw my career growing, yeah. they didn't want to remove. leverage, yeah. Yeah, and then it took so much fight for them to remove it. You know what I mean? And the thing is, DJ Fresh's song was on the commercial. You know mm. what I mean? It was like, I was like, oh, look, this is cool. Like, you're encouraging people to have safe sex. Like, I'm not embarrassed about that thing. The only reason I have a bad memory of it or a bad feeling about it is how they treated me after the contractual period. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, when people say Lovers Plus, the only reason I'm, like, annoyed mm. is because of... Um, ooh, I don't want to have, like... What's that guy, the deputy president? Ooh, like the fly in his... So, um, that's why, like, I just felt so um, undermined and mistreated by them. Yeah. Because they, they directly and purposefully did that. Yeah. And um, I don't know if I've forgiven them, you know. Yeah. Well, I can't say I care that much, but um, I was very touched by how they treated me. Has, has that happened a lot in your career? Because, I mean, you've worked with a lot of people, man. What do you mean? Like, you know, where you treat it badly, where there's yeah. contracts, yeah? Yeah. You've been screwed over. All the time. Fuck me. I probably still get screwed over. Sometimes I just... I just, you just learn how to keep moving. Cause if you, I mean, unless it's like a ton of money, yeah. you know, um, you have to sometimes just keep moving, yeah. you know, L allow karma to deal with people. 
um, I used to be quite like, you know, seemingly like as if I love conflict. But sometimes people don't really know the entire backstory yeah. and they don't know why I'm being so hectic. Because at the time, like, I don't want to say I wasn't smart, but I wasn't, I wasn't, I, I never was like thinking strategically. Mm. I was just always being honest yeah. with people. Yeah. And, um, and then I, I, I mean, I, I caught some smoke for that, but I've learned from that. Yeah. And now it's kind of, I, I try and be a little bit calculated, but it's not really in, in my blood. But none of that couch uh, casting stuff, no? That stuff, I've never, I've fallen victim to it, but I've never succumbed to it. Shit. So, you know, there was a, one of the big bosses at one of these places. I don't want to get into who it was, but... I went upstairs to be like, hey, like, why are they taking my rate down? Like, what the fuck? Like, what's happening? You guys are supposed to be giving raises like this time of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why yeah. is my rate going down? And, and, and I had a few complaints. And the whole thing about working for whom and whom and not being able to work for the other person, etc. I was like, what the hell's going on here? Like, other people are doing it. Mm. What is the issue with me? Or you just don't take me seriously. You think I need this more than everybody else. Mm. Or more than other people. And um, the guy was like, no, I'll sort it out. I'll sort it out. I'll sort it out. I've never, I guess the couch costing is something I've never had. Yeah. But at like advanced sexual. Ad sexual advances. I don't want to say, because the person just said, come to my house for dinner. Fuck. You know what that means. So then I said. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> then, Deuces. Then I went. <laughs> No, then I was supposed to have another meeting. Yeah. Then I called his secretary. Yeah. And I said, yo, so I don't want to be in this meeting alone, mm. this next meeting, because this is what happened last time. Mm. She was like, wow. I was like, she says, people just usually go to the meeting. Wow. And I was like, well, I don't want to go. <laughs> so I just need, I said, I just need you to help me. Like, I need to get my money, but like, I don't want to go to this nigga's house. Mm. And, um, yeah. Shit, so this Harvey Weinstein stuff happens in SA, It's real. Bro. It's Fuck. real. It's very real. And girls, especially in South Africa, are afraid to talk about it because, you know, these, some of these men are really powerful, mm. you know? Aren't they all, man? Right. No, some, some of it is just shame. You don't want to be called every time someone says you introduces you. You know that girl who was harassed by so-and-so? Mm. Oh, you know that girl who was raped by so-and-so? Now it's like a defining factor about you. When, you, when As a person, you are so much more. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a lot that, get, that goes into it. So, yeah. How life-changing was Queen Sono, man? Like, I was so happy when I saw them. I'm like, fuck, this is huge. <laughs> I'm even shocked you're doing this interview because I thought you were gone, gone. <laughs> no, dog. Like, this whole thing of like, you've got to keep your mind like... Level-headed. Like, like, you've got to keep your, your feet on the ground. You know mm, what I mean? Mm. Like, for me, to, to have people feel that way mm. would be problematic because people should know that... Not just because they have access to you, but people should know that if someone who's done one, two, three, four, five is accessible, real, and allows like the type of contact that will either inspire them or just make them realize, yo, man, you can do this too. Mm. Like it's, I'm not saying it's easy, mm. but it's attainable if you just work hard, if you just believe, if you just have the passion. Mm. So it's, it's maybe it's also my gift and my curse because I love... I love contact with people, but at the same time, I think I get disrespected a lot just because I make myself quite accessible. Mm. How does Queen Sono come about? Queen Sono comes about, um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling kind of like the world is changing mm. and I'm realizing like, okay, cool. I'm, 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 and every time I say this, people go, eh, but I'm starting to um, realize that the world is going this way in terms of the ideas of skin color and getting work oh, and shit. stuff like that. Is it that deep? Don't make it a big deal because then I'm <laughs> going to trend on Twitter. <laughs> you know, the thing is, it's, for me, I've always said it's important that it's happening because truly, like, black people, especially darker people, have gotten the very short end of the stick for a very long time. I feel like 
I think it's a very American conversation. But in terms of beauty standards specifically, worldwide, yes, an, an exotic or a white looking person was seen as beautiful, mm. right? But in terms of work in South Africa, how do you explain Brenda Fassi, Lebo Matosa, mm. being like Miriam Makeba? Like, you can't say like women are the only get people getting work mm. in South Africa, or mm. at least even on the continent. Maybe, but let me speak for South Africa. Mm. But in terms of how people were identified to be beautiful, that now that's a different conversation, and that conversation I concede to. Mm. Um, but the idea that I'm not allowed to now tell stories because I've had privileges in the past. Mm. Now I, I need to what, find a new job, go drill tar, build houses. I don't, mm. I don't know what else to do. Mm. So I decided it's time to take control of my destiny. For real. And I went to Kachisa and I was like, okay, cool. I've got this idea. I want to be like the African Tomb Raider. I want to do this, this, that, the other. Mm. I have these other ideas. I want to be a producer now. Because I also want to lift people up. I don't want to just always be at the front, you know? Why do you go to Kajiso? We just done Catching Feelings. And oh, I fucking love that, eh? Thank you. Yeah, that was dope, man. That was <laughs> so we've done Catching Feelings and I trusted him and I enjoyed working with him. I loved his vision. I loved his vibe. Mm, and I went to him. Great guy, eh? Amazing guy. Yeah. And then um, I spoke to him and he loved the idea. I showed him a video of me doing um, some stunt training for Scorpion King. He was blown away. Yeah. And then he started building the idea, creating it, uh, growing it and fleshing it out. And his wife and business partner, Tamsin, in this story, more importantly, his business partner, um, went out and sold the idea. We were looking for investors, you know, looking yeah. for people to buy in. Tando, why do you hate me? <laughs> no, we can't hear. Like, we can't oh. hear at all. Okay, sorry. Don't worry about it. Anyway, okay, I'll carry on. Yeah. But Tando's here making noise. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then Tamsin went out and saw the idea. Netflix happened to be in town. Funny enough, catching feelings. I just, I just need to blow my own horn more. No, you do, bro. You've done some amazing shit. I really shit. don't. And I just don't see the need to. Ugh. Anyway, so Catching Feelings was the first film mm. that they ever, like the first film acquisition, if mm. I can call mm. it that, that they got from the continent. So the first film Netflix, Netflix ever bought wow. that was African, to my knowledge, was Catching Feelings. Mm. And then the first series they ever made. So there's all confusion about, ah, oh man, what's the... Uh, shadow. Shadow. Yeah. The whole confusion about Shadow and Queen Sono. Mm. I'm not saying, no one is saying mm. that Shadow was maybe the first South African series that was broadcast on Netflix. Mm. Queen Sono is the first series that Netflix made mm, with their own money, mm. original. Mm. And the thing is, they always put Netflix original there, mm. but it, it means that it's the first time it's being seen on Netflix, so it's an original. But this was the first original, as in like they made it, they commissioned it, they paid for it. Mm. So there's a big difference there, guys. Like, oh my God, this is so exhausting. And Shadow was great. I watched it, I loved it, and yeah. How big was that Queen Sona bag? Must have been huge, ne? I mean, look what we had. <laughs> this is a couple of bags. <laughs> this is not just. <laughs> you must realize when, when you do a show like Queen Sono, you can't do any other work. Oh, okay. For that so duration. Once, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this tax, this commission, they get mm, too excited. Mm. And you must know it was the first one they were doing. So it was, it was also a test. Yeah. And uh, the, the bag was good. Yeah. You know, but uh, bags can always be bigger. They can uh, be better. When you start getting recognition from like Gabriel Union and all those guys, is that from Queen Sona, eh? No, from Catching Feelings. Actually. Catching Feelings? Yeah. Oh, wow. Catching Feelings actually did really well. That's Catching Feelings, presumably, and what I've heard, um, I'm not speaking for Netflix, was top 10 in 50 countries with no like. Wow. With no, with no like uh, marketing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it did so well that it, that's why they were so interested to have another conversation with us yeah. about, um, about, about Queen Sono. So everything, Lisa, Scorpion King led to Queen Sono. Catching Feelings and Scorpion King led to Queen Sono. Yeah. You know, don't disrespect any step in your life thinking it's not leading you to the next thing. Sometimes God provides an opportunity to you, not because 
um, it's it's your final destination, but because it's a, it's a lesson, stepping you need stone. to learn a stepping stone mm. that was going to allow you. There's a lot of steps to get to the mm. top and you've got to respect and take each step. Don't try and jump. You're going to miss some valuable lessons and you'll trip and fall. Why wasn't it uh, renewed? So it was renewed. Okay. And then um, it was postponed twice. Mm. And the future, I think, is um, so uncertain. Mm. We wanted to travel, you know, wanted to go to Morocco, mm-hmm. you know, do more international kind of trips. And um, after the two postponements, Ugh, there's so much I can't say. I yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to lie to you. Yeah, 100%. There's so yeah. much I can't say. But what I will say yeah. is Viola Davis watched it. Hey! And she told me it was good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not, I'm, I, you know, I'm initially, I, I think what I might have felt is confused mm-hmm. and disappointed. Um, but I think because I grew up as a model, I started out as a model. I'm very impersonal about work. Mm. I'm very like, I'm, it's it's work and I've been disappointed so many times mm. that I'm never in shock. Mm. I'm still getting my bag though. Yeah. And when you so. get when you get the call from Viola Davis, Cable Union, aren't you like, fuck? Do you call Lovers Plus and tell them, fuck you guys, look, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I'd lose my mind, bro. <laughs> April Union. You know, if I told you the people on my fucking phone, yeah. you would not believe me. Shh. If I just said, look, yeah, these yeah, are my yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't, you know, I think because I'm not like, ah, excited. Pearl. I, I swear to God, like, obviously, like, people in my acting industry, whatever, I think doing live and RGB and stuff exposed me to so many, like, celebrities, local and international, that not maybe the, the novelty wore off maybe mm. but I kind of realized these people are just human mm. you know and and the more you kind of make a big deal about anyone the more you kind of mm. you know push them away or make them shy or make them kind of put up a wall yeah. so I'm very like um, calm yeah I, I may love you and I may respect you and adore you, but when you're here, you're when you're in front of me now, you're a person. Mm. So remember what I was telling you about David O? Like as a person... Not too great. I'm not saying he's not too great. Mm. I don't know I don't know him well enough to yeah. make that type of decision. Judgment, yeah. But um, trying to work with him has been unnecessarily difficult. Yeah, yeah. But his music, please, let's not have, let's not fight. Yes, yeah. let's not fight. <laughs> He's amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. He is amazing. <laughs> but am I trying to sit down and interview him? Yeah. No. So if you met Oprah, you wouldn't go Google Gaga? I definitely, for like someone like Oprah, Meryl Streep, Viola. I mean, if I could tell you how I reacted. I, this is the first time I talk about this. I actually really didn't want to talk about this. <laughs> but it's, it's, um, it's, there's certain people where I lose my mind. But there's certain people I keep it cool. Like obviously with... With Miss Union, mm. uh, Mrs. Union Wade, she's a really lovely person, and the circumstances I met her under were like, you need to stay calm. But when you, res- I feel like when you respect someone, yeah. especially like someone who's a big celebrity or in a very accomplished artist, mm. you need to, you know, that respect your parents taught you at mm. home, like keep calm. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I have that where it's like. I'm here to respect you. I'm not trying to take pictures. I'm not trying to have like forced conversations. Mm. I'm not trying to do that. Like I'm trying to like respect your space. So I think that's what my thing is. It's not that I'm not excited. I'm just respecting your space. Like I've been like, yeah, if I told you, like, yeah. (laughs) I've been in spaces where I'm looking at so-and-so like this. We're at a party and I'm just like, Ugh. <laughs> and also the there's, there's friends of mine who take me to places where I have access to these type of people. Yeah. If, I, if I act out of like pocket or if I get too excited, like you make people uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. You know, in their minds, like this is not, this is normal to you. So you just got to keep How, How's it that side in America? What do you mean? Like, how's the, the vibe? Because, you know, everybody's trying to go that side, you know? And you've been there. You've done it on the T-shirt. All I'm going to say is that it's amazing. Mm. The people are actually incredible. Yeah. But I saw this thing of everything coming to Africa like three years ago. For real. I saw it coming. And I said to myself, also, like, something Priyanka Chopra taught me was like, don't... Priyanka? You've met him? 
Priyanka Chopra. I worked with her on Quantico, nigga. Oh, yeah, she doesn't watch that. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, and I mean, everyone knows that. So, Priyanka is an incredible woman. Let me yeah. start there. And kind with her time and energy and space. Oh, she's yeah. beautiful. She's also oh, incredibly man. beautiful. Gorgeous. But her heart is like, yeah. oh my God. Like, you know who I was thinking about when you said Priyanka Chopra? I'm thinking about the guy that meditates. What's, what's his name? Oh, Deepak Chopra. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm like. Have you met him? He stays live on Instagram lately. <laughs> Deepak, relax. Um, no, 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 Priyanka. And oh, so okay, she yes. taught me you've got to keep one foot on each side of mm. whatever. So like... The, my power is in Africa. Wow. That's the power they want. So if I now like am hustling in the States and I lose my power here, then mm. I'm in a, having a big problem, mm. you know? And the other thing is life is actually much better here. Mm. Nandi said the same thing. Nandi Madida. Li- yeah. So life is actually the quality, the quality of, she of said life. The same thing, yeah. Is, and we haven't actually even really had that conversation, I think, in passing. But the quality of life is better here. Um, and you want to be special there. So if you have, yeah, you want to be special that side. So again, my whole thing about the American dream is not to be enslaved by it, mm. but to negotiate with it. Oof. So I'm not slave to the American dream. I'm not... I'm not, that's not my dream. Mm. Americans can help me achieve my actual dream. Stepping stone. Right. Which my actual dream is to leave a legacy where Mm. African entertainment negotiates at the same and an equal level when they meet at the table with the American industry. Mm. That's my dream. I hope I live to see it. I hope Spike Lee flies out here and says, Brendan Oli, I need you in my film. Mm. Not us keep on begging their asses for stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what Africans, we are the kings and queens. Yeah. Like, Beyonce had to tell us even. You know mm. what I mean? Things that we're supposed to walk in, like, knowing. And I think as South Africans especially, like, I, we, I know we love our culture. We do. But we have a lot of... Um, self-hate and psychological issues Mm. coming from... And the thing is, people don't know that memories are genetically passed on. So memories of apartheid, black people having this weird fear of dogs, that shit is genetically passed on because dogs were used to hurt Mm. the black community. Mm. You know, um, the, the, the weird fear of police cars, you know what I mean? It's like getting nervous, you know, and... And those things are genetically passed on. We have a lot of work to do. Mm. So there's a lot of decisions I make about relationships. Um, like, I leave a nigga real quick. For like, real? I don't, I, I, <laughs> like for my kids, I want them to know you can, make, you can survive on your own and you don't have to expect or accept second best mm. or mediocre or the bare minimum in order for you to be in something called a relationship. Mm. A relationship is supposed to supplement, not like be absolutely necessary. Um, shalala. <laughs> <laughs> and how far do you think we are to achieving that, that dream of yours? As long as we're still celebrating the first... Mm. Nah, 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 we're still quite a way away. And it's important to celebrate that. That's why I don't make a big deal. Because mm. for me, it's a reminder of how far away I am from, you know, the first black woman to host... Comedy Row Central, first black lead of an African original, first this, you know, it's like I'm proud of that achievement that I've kicked down the door, I've broken the glass ceiling or whatever, but we have a long way to go. So maybe like Mandela, I'll see it as I'm about to like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your love hate relationship with, with black Twitter or social media in general, mm. man. Like, the stick you get, fuck, I don't know how I'd be able to deal with it. You know, the thing is, people think this light skin thing just started with them. Mm. I've had this conversation since I was like 11. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Pageant days. My whole, you know, the f- let me not make a thing about it. Um, because then it's like, see the fact that... No, 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 no. The point is, people think this conversation is new. I believed that I had worked so hard that I was past that conversation of my, my, the color of my skin. Mm. 
my whole life eh wena ubomvu zokulinda nje ukhulu ube ngakanani you know like um I when you say look at your own, you must enjoy your own pill. You know, hey, when I go to the shop, hey, when I tangle the shop, hey, when I squat, hey, when I push man, like that's my entire life. Mm. And people think this shit is new, so they think they're killing me. You know, mm. and I'm just like, there was a one time where it was like industry people and other people got involved, and it was like industry people. Yeah, industry people. Bonnie had a good time with me, mm, you know, oh yeah, Bonnie, a couple of times and I ignored her the first one or two times. I just kept quiet and I was like, "Girl, you have my number. You have my number and I've always seen you as a big sister. Like, this is so disappointing. Like, what did I do? I, all I did was defend my work. That's all I did. I never said I just said you can't say all I have is purely because of something I can't change mm. and expect me to accept that you know you can't and that's rude so i'm going to defend my work i've worked really hard i've slept yeah. in parking lots because i was too tired to drive home like i've worked and for anyone to think they can take that away from me because the colorism conversation is now a conversation that's important to have but now you're going to attack just one person just me am i the only light skin girl in this industry oh. no i'm not i'm the only one saying fuck you for saying it's only cuz i'm light skin yeah fuck you for that now pearl saying there was never colorism i didn't say that i didn't i just said that's unfair for you to say it's this is the only reason i'm here and the conversation became a big thing and then i cried and then body was like crying light skin tears and i was like oh, wow oh my God. <laughs> that's tears savage had, like wow <laughs> that's savage and then i had a couple of questions for her yeah. but we won't get into those and and i've moved on from that and she's that's fucked up bro so whenever you do like i've never seen it like that but people see color first like whenever you do shit that's weird. and it's always upset me when it's like like there's there's certain super valid points that i see and acknowledge but no one wants to acknowledge it because they want someone to be upset with people need someone to be a villain in their story and when you've been the chosen one to be the villain sometimes you've just got to accept that and keep walking i can't fight the fact that you hate me do you, do you wish you were, you were darker uh i used to like burn my skin when i was a kid to, to stop the teasing yeah because in masana i didn't grow up around other light skin people you yeah. know what i mean i grew up i grew up with dark people all around me mm. so i couldn't speak english but they'd go like shibi shibi <laughs> i'd walk past where is chela how big elen gani like i'm just walking to buy bread barefoot <laughs> like i'm 7 years old like what's going on so um I was crying constantly title tailing on my title tailing on my cousins even mm. to my father like they're calling me postman yeah. and um yeah and because the thing is I went to a colored school I didn't belong there either I didn't speak like them I didn't understand like mm. the upbringing and then I went to an Indian school I think that's how I became an actor because I had to like camouflage yeah, in every yeah, situation. Yeah, you got to you got to fit in everywhere. <laughs> when I got to Pine Town Girls I sounded like an Indian. <laughs> so I went to an Indian school like hello ma'am. <laughs> no ma'am. I did my homework. <laughs> no baby. So um no, yeah, so my journey's been an interesting one and one day I'll tell it but I'm so exhausted defending um what i am and who i am it's so weird that someone is going through this man like it's, it's it it's, is what it's it so is so foreign to me the thing is colorism in the states is a very important conversation mm. colorism in south africa due to beauty standards and maybe in the modeling industry as well but the, we are the mass here we are yeah majority yes we are the majority thank you in in america they're not yeah yeah right minority so yeah they're a minority there we're a majority here so in the rama edwards mm. in the flower edwards the, they would always have white and black mm. and sometimes colored mm. because they need black people to see themselves in a position where they're buying these things in order for for them to sell the product um 
actors, musicians, like, what do you even mean? Like, our industry hasn't respected dark people. That is so rude. Mm. Like, so Miriam Makeba, mm. like, fair enough, when you're black, especially in the States, you have to be exceptionally good. Mm. In order Davis. To be there. Right. Mm. So I took it as a great compliment when they invited me over for Quantico. Mm. Did I think that made me better than other actors in South Africa? No. Mm. Did I think that I'm now deserve more respect in South Africa? No. Mm. I always saw myself like that. The fact that the country woke up to me being an actor and still call me a bad actress, you can really suck a dick. Like, I, I honestly don't care. Mm. I got my bag. I'm taking care of my kids. Dude. I got my acre. Yeah. What is your tweet going to do to me? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so... It's, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's something that my childhood actually prepared me for. You and I didn't even skin, realize. Yeah. Because since I was a kid, I got bullied in high school. Like, oh, it's only because she's light-skinned. I mean, come on. Like, uh, why isn't every... Why aren't you a light-skinned nigga sitting in front of me right now? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, yes, 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 it's true. Shit, in terms man. of beauty standards, yeah. yes, yeah. it's so true. Yeah. Um, in terms of purely because I'm light skin, I wouldn't have made it this far if it was purely because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I might have got a yep. foot in. Yeah, yeah. I might have got a toe in. Yeah, you're right. I might have stuck around for a year or two, <laughs> <laughs> you know, serving you Lovers Plus, serving you <laughs> RGB. <laughs> but bitch, I'm still here. So <laughs> if my light skin has kept me here, then I should. I, uh, I don't know what else to tell you, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there was an, there was that day where I cried about it. I think when I was a child, I didn't defend it. Mm. I tried to fit in so much that yeah. people wouldn't notice mm. when I was a kid. And as I grew older, like I, I began to start loving myself and like getting over that whole conversation. And then when it came up, I think the child in me was so angry mm. that for the first time I have, it was like, you have to do something now. And you got a voice. A now you can't voice. just keep quiet and nod and look down and walk away yeah. because you know you're different in that community. So anyway, yeah. Fuck, man. But I don't know how you handle the, the, the hate that you get, like, from, from social media, man. Like, I would go crazy. Really? Yeah, man. I think I care too much about what people think. I usually get phone calls that something's happening on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just made me not see it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, are you okay? Yeah. Why? I'm fine. <laughs> no, I'm just checking up on you. I see Twitter is having a moment. Uh, the latest thing now is to call me like a uh, Nigerian whore. Or wow. Why are they calling you that? Because people make xenophobic statements to defend their idea of South African, um, being South African, being, being patriots of South Africa. Okay, okay. So they become, they make xenophobic statements, you know, and say really, really... Um, really cruel things mm. about people. And I've said that's not acceptable. Yeah. You know, yes, it's true. Um, people who are foreign to South African land are sometimes doing things that are criminal in yeah, the Yeah, there's country. always bad apples everywhere. But yeah. so when South African men kill South African yeah. women every day, like mm. men, people in general in are general. trash. Yeah, yeah. It's not that you're Nigerian, mm. that you're doing something mm. fucked up. You're mm. just a trash person. Mm. And, a, and tagging Nigerian, Zimbabwean, Malawian, Botswana, anybody, people, and saying purely because of that, mm. their nationality location. makes them criminals and location makes them criminals, mm. means everybody from, the, you know, that's just, yeah. it's, it's, it's very ignorant. Yeah. And um, again, I've always said it's probably people who've never been on a plane who say things <laughs> like that. And I say it with the greatest of respect. Yeah. You know, my own family has said things like that. And I, and I, and I mm. discipline them. Well, I argue with them too. So anyway. So if you don't care so much about what people think, why deactivate your accounts? Because I make money. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I can make some bags there. No, you you know? de didn't you deactivate your social media accounts? No, I deactivated my 
social media accounts because my father died. Oh. Yeah. There's something about okay. death and mourning. Is that mine or yours? Yeah, it's probably Zintle calling. No, that's not my ringtone. Uh, whose phone is that? Oh, it's mine. No, it's not mine. Mine's inside. It's ringing right behind you, though. Anyway. Renton? Is it in... Oh, shit, it's in my bag. <laughs> it's my son's phone. <laughs> <laughs> you see now. He's probably looking for his games and shit. This nigga. It happens to the best of us. Don't stress. We'll just ignore it. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, what were we talking about? Yeah, what my, were we talking oh, about? Oh, yeah, I deactivated oh, yes. my social media accounts because uh, my dad had passed away. And I'm not like, there have been some people, and I'm not like saying, ah, oh, you know, this person. No, no, no. People mourn in very different ways. I just find it really weird, excuse me, that someone will have a moment. I know my father had died mm. to go onto Twitter and tell people I have to think about the words, mm. post a picture, and I have to select the picture. How many likes did it get? What? Mm. You know, mm. the way I was taught to mourn is very different. Mm. And the way I generally mourn is different. Like I just have to disengage, yeah. you know, disconnect and completely disconnect. And, um, I didn't want anything that happened online to trigger me. Mm. And I just thought to myself, oh my God, like these niggas really hate me. So what I need to do, as long as they're talking about me though, <laughs> the thing is, I don't want to be in this type of space and do something or say something I'll regret mm. because of... Emotions are high. Because of the dark place I'm in at mm. this time. Mm. So I was just trying to protect myself um, and honor my father in a way that um, was good. I think I'm trying to think of what to do for him, mm -hmm. um, but I think I need to heal first. Yeah. And it's been difficult not really talking about it um, in a way that's, like in a way other people express, mm. you know. Um, I just wasn't ready and I didn't know how to. So I just chose to um, keep quiet yeah. because it's my last parent mm. and um, it was a very complicated relationship and we were very close, even when we were fighting. Like it was just everything about him and I was intense. And I honestly feel like I felt like I'd lost a child. Wow. Because at some stage, like that's what he was to me. Like, I've washed my father, you know. Um, I've taken him to the bathroom. I've actually taken care of him when he needed me. And he still let me down in some ways, but, like, he was my dad, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it was just I needed time. Yeah. And I needed to not have... It was also like just the first week of lockdown when he passed away. So it was a very like confusing time. Yeah. And I mean, he was almost like, oh God, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's be, it was a difficult time. Yeah. And who, who, who are you calling and expressing these emotions to, uh, uh, you know, when this is my happening? My friends and my family. Yeah. You know? Mm. Um... Obviously, Zintle, Oiti actually came to see me that same day when I found out. I've got like different circles of friends for different areas of my life. Because like, yeah. I have friends like, and all of them are personal, but I have friends who are like, I've known for 12 to 20 years or whatever. And then I have friends I've met in the last 10 years who are industry or not industry related or are... Um, Friends, you know, friends you can go to the club with, friends yeah. you can go to the picnic with, friends you go to church with, friends you um, have house parties with, Kaya, Langa, Olisa. You know, like, I never have to bother a friend who hates the club mm. to go to the club. So yeah, that, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I've got a bunch of people that um, I speak to. But to be honest, like, 
it's taken me a long time to even get to a place where I can actually finish a sentence about yeah. my father's passing. Um, Do you ever think about seeing a shrink or something like that? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm, I'm really into that. Mm. I'm very much into that. In fact, Basi, Basitana Kumalo's uh, mommy, <laughs> um, she organized a shrink for me because I told her how I was feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she took care of my kids for like, <laughs> like from the time I had to go to the funeral because I decided not to take the kids because at the time this corona thing was still very like no one knew what was happening. Mm. And I think I only got them like four, six weeks later. Mm. I just needed like, I just needed to be alone. You know, it's so hard for me to see you like this because whenever I see you, dude, you're twerking, you're smiling, you know what I mean? I'm working when I do it. <laughs> and, and you're just human, man. I No, I'm extraordinary. <laughs> Queen. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I am. I mean, and I mean, it. Re- and the thing is, it kept on tr- I kept on being triggered. Like, mm. when, when Somizi lost my Mary. Mm. Um, and you're very close with them. Yeah, and I, um, who else? Oh, Lute lost her brother. Mm. Last year when Minnie lost her brother. Um, Kanye lost her dad. Uh, Oskido lost his dad. Mm, yeah. Like people's dads just yes, like. Dude. It's been a crazy year. Man. Like bounce this year. And um, yeah, I, I, I can't say I'm coping. Mm. I'm not. So... My dad's passing has really fucked me up. (laughs) So when people like come for me, I'm just like, you think you can do more? Like, you can't. I'm in the deepest pain I think I've ever been in. And... um, There's nothing anyone can do or say to drag me any deeper. Yeah. I'm at the lowest. I can emotionally. Mm. I'm grateful for everything I have and I'm doing my best to keep my chin up. But I'm not I'm not like okay. Yeah. And I'm trying I'm working on it. And at least like I'm honest, you know. Yeah, at least. Yeah. That's the first step, you know. I'm keeping it like very I'm being very honest with myself so that I don't wake up like five years later with like a deep depression, which is how things happen with my mom. So I'm just taking it one step at a time for now. Yeah. Yeah. And when do you find, where do you find solace, like happiness? Is, it, do, is that why you, you, you dive into your work, you know, just to escape, you know? I just sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, my kids, my friends. Yeah. My team at ACA. Um, so I'm trying to keep my posture straight. <laughs> I'm like really obsessed with my posture at the moment. Um, I just meditate. I pray. Oh, you meditate? I try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meditation is a really tricky thing, you know. Yeah. Um, and I speak to the right people. Like I'm very selective about who I get into it with you know Mm. um and um yeah and I'm able to let out there or I go for a run I remember once I went to a run in Zimbabwe and I just like found this new path I'd never found before and I just I was running up the hill and I just remember I stopped and just started screaming wow you know it's just you have to let it out Mm. So sometimes I just cry myself to sleep or the thing about my dad is like, there was so much that had happened. And when he passed away, there were so many plans we had just made. So I'm, I'm feeling at a huge loss. That's all. But I, my friends have been incredible. Yeah. Yeah. How do you distinguish? Because I find it so hard in the industry to distinguish, like if this is an industry friend or like a real, real friend. Hey man, when it's dark, which stars are shining, yeah. you know? Um, and I've got great instincts about those types of things. Yeah. You can pick it up. 
I've got great instincts about those things. And yeah. the thing is, I also know like when to bounce. Like, because mm. the thing, I don't know, I also just give everybody a fair chance, an opportunity. Not that they've asked for it, but I always open myself up initially. Like, yeah, because I've met you today. I've never seen you. Well, I've seen you once. And you're like, yeah, you can come to my house. I'm but like, I feel oh, like what? I've known you my whole damn life. I've been seeing you and seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my assistant was actually like, hey, you've known him for a long time. I said, nah, no, actually. <laughs> I just feels like it. Um, yeah, yeah. So, isn't it isn't it hard for you? Because I find uh, since I started the podcast, because it seems like you know everybody in the industry. Yeah. So when you do interviews for behind the story, isn't it hard to like balance between? Okay, is my cool. lash still there? Oh, okay, let's do that. Oh, you still look pretty. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, to to because like you might know personal stuff about Zintle, for example, but she doesn't want people to know. But because you are hosting the show, people want to know. Do you then ask or do you have to draw the line? Okay, cool. Let me respect our so friendship. So private conversations are off limits for me, mm. even if I know the answer. Mm. You know, and I think that's why people come because they know they can trust me. Mm. There was one person who showed me flames in an interview. Like, first of all, this person arrived like arrived like three hours late. For real? I think, I think it might have been three and a half or two and a half. They arrived late. Then they don't want to talk about anything. Now I'm like, we only have 45 minutes to shoot. I can't even restructure. Because <laughs> I think what people take for granted is the amount of time I put into those yeah. interviews. The interview and pre. Mm. Everyone involved, including people behind the scenes. Mm. You know who you are. And um, when you get there with so much shit, you don't apologize. And you just... You <laughs> there was something this person said. And I can't even... I was like, but you've spoken about this stuff before. Who are you talking about? On, uh, <laughs> on, your, on your platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for my platform. Shit. Like, not for you. And I was just like... Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, okay. Um, well, <laughs> this is what I said. Well, the thing is like... There's somebody who's watching here who might not have seen your show mm, yet, you know? Because mm. I'm trying to like be as nice as I possibly can yeah. and vice versa, you know? And then she said, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that person said, um, yeah, um, such and such thing that I'm doing had like a million views. Wow. So I think we'll be fine. And I turned around and I said, <laughs> Bitch. She said, sorry, did you speak? I said, no, nah, I say nothing. <laughs> All right, cool, let's carry on. <laughs> and the thing is, what upset me is, we had had so many private, I knew more than I should. Mm. More than the average person knows. Yeah, yeah. Hello, baby. No, it's fine. He's cute. Um, and she knew I wouldn't use it against her. Mm. And I just, I just didn't appreciate how I was treated. Yeah. Because there was a lot of respect from my side and excitement and et cetera. And I thought we had a great rapport initially until I was punished that day. But um, no, and a personal conversation, especially a, a one that could be damaging, not just for the person I'm interviewing, but for a loved one or, okay. you know, anything that's going to take attention the wrong way when the story is about celebrating you, um, that I definitely refuse to do. So, um, what work goes behind your, your interviews? Like, what do you, what do you do? <clears throat> Excuse me. Just hours of watching content. You, your shows, if you've mm. interviewed the person already. Yeah, but I just talk about sex, you know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Anela's show, oh, Anela's Mudia good. Dia show. I always try and, and, and big them up and thank them. Anela's good. Um, and all the articles that um, that I that I watch that I read. Yeah. Um, who else do I watch? So, what do you think makes a good interview, according to you? Just research and vibes. Mm. Research, vibes, good sound, good lighting, obviously. Yeah. Music, not too loud, et cetera. But um, just a good energy. Mm -hmm. Someone who's willing to open up. Yeah, yeah. Or someone who makes people feel comfortable enough to open up. Like, 
I'll always self-deprecate. So if someone says, oh, Paul's talking about herself again, it's like, no, sometimes as an interviewer, yeah. you, see, you know, you don't have to do that shit with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you have to be like, you know, when I was pregnant, uh -huh. you gotta um, open up. one, yeah. two, three, four, five, how was that experience for you? Yeah. You know, so yeah. that the person knows this is not a trap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Firstly, I'm just trying to have a conversation, yeah. um, but it's, you know, it, it's, it's scripted as an interview, but it's, it must be, must flow yeah. and be easy to watch. Yeah. Um, and um, but then the thing is, we could do that here, and mm. an editor can just go fuck it up. Shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's there's it could go a lot of ways. Yeah. I agree with you with vibes. Like um, when I interviewed Nandi Madida, <sighs> she's a sweetie. Oh man, man the vibes. Fuck, I don't she's want to. She's such a sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. Who's been your best uh, interview that you enjoyed? Oh, it's so difficult to say. Meh. Because some of the one, some of my best ones were not necessarily the most popular ones. My favorite. Oh yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. It's always the case, right? Yeah. The Unati one was amazing. Yeah. Um, Master Chaba one was was good. The oh, Sumizi yeah, one Chaba, was yeah. great. Um, I think I, I really enjoy interviewing like iconic people like Mam Connie. Mm. Um, I got to interview Oskido. That was dope. Because I make them sit there for hours, nigga. Like, and it's supposed to be 45 minutes at the end, which really hurts my spirit yeah. because we could use so much of it online. That's why I'm saying you must start your own podcast. Bro. Rather, ne? Yeah. There's no rules here. You can go come. for three hours. Yeah. Why don't you produce it for me? I would. Would you really? Yeah. Oh. Anything. I'll do anything to come to this house. Like, ah. Once a week. <laughs> I'll make a special vegetable garden just for you. <laughs> All right, cool. So I got some uh, questions from my chillers, ne? There's quite a lot, but I'll try to get through some of them. All right, here we go. Um, please ask Pearl, why was the decision to move back to SA when her international acting career was on the rise? That time she was doing Quantico, Scorpion King, Book of Souls. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, I saw the African potential. And like I said, my, my, my vision and my legacy is meant to uplift Africa, yeah. not uplift myself in America. Um, and I believe that the way to get to the top is actually through the continent. Yeah. yeah. Is it true you were broke after Quantico? I wouldn't say broke. Yeah. That's compared to the brokenness I explained earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Levels. But you must understand I was paying two bills now. Yeah. So in the end, it was like, you know, I was paying my bills there, and which was like thing. double my bills here just because of the the the... the it's expensive to live there, mm. but the standard is lower mm, mm. Um, as well, specifically in New York. Yeah. And, um, and then I was still paying bills here. Yeah. You know, yeah. like the bond, the car. Yeah. No, that nanny. doesn't sound like you're broke. No, <laughs> it's I, relative. I, I was just, it, it just, when I came back, it was like I needed to, no one knew I was here. It was like I needed to start from scratch or yeah. something. It was a really interesting. But but what happened actually was that I, the depression I spoke of earlier was not having really dealt properly with my mother's death mm. and um, other things that I'd had to deal with along the way. So when I was in New York, I was alone for the first time. Mm. So my demons really caught up with me, mm. um, which was really good actually, because it gave me an opportunity to know what was happening deep in my spirit. And um, so, no, I wasn't, I, I wasn't broke. I was just um, not in a good place. Mm. Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't dabbled in drugs. Or have you? No. No, you haven't. No, no? I, have, um, I grew up, my mother was a nurse. They used to bring uh, ex-convicts to my school. Oh, okay. And that shit was just super scary for yeah, me. Yeah, that's no, a good way to... Drugs is... Oh, do you think I've got money to buy a house like this? <laughs> just that drugs. Uh, ask of an entertainer's salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, ask her what really caused the beef between her and Bonang. Oh, man. You know, the thing is, I think both her and I really don't care anymore. Mm. It's just that I think it's not something anyone can salvage. Mm. You know? So you guys were tight? I can't say we were tight. Mm. I can say we were we got along fine. Oh, okay. And um, the things that happen is, and now I'd have to like, what if now I'm getting sued and I have to provide proof yeah. when I just know the story and I know what happened. Yeah. And it, there was a huge amount of disrespect behind closed doors. Some people do things in the darkness and smile for you when the lights are on mm. and create a beautiful illusion. I keep it straight up all the time. Yeah. And I think the reason, you asked me earlier, the reason a lot of black Twitter... They expect people to abide to their rules. And the reason I'm problematic is I don't. Yeah. And I keep rising the more they try. And, mm. you know, that would upset me if I try to kill a bitch and she just kept living, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? 
And when yeah. someone doesn't respect your idea, it's almost like the societal norms on black Twitter that people are supposed to subscribe to. And the fact that I don't do that, I think yeah. upsets a lot of people. And I think that, um, I think whatever anyone wants to say, Bonang is an, is an incredible entertainer. Yeah. yeah. Um, One of the she's best. She's done really well. And mm. I think trying to, and the thing is the media started it as well. Mm. Like it was the media that was like doing this pitting against each other. Yeah. There was a gig that, you know, there's a lot of things that happen. But they were also years ago and I'm like a mother of two, like yeah. with three dogs. Like I actually don't care like, about that shit. I've got important things to worry about, but I wish her nothing but the best. When else did you see or speak to? I have no memory of that. For real? I don't you guys don't bump each other at gigs and stuff? No. Wow, how crazy? That's actually, re- like, that's that's really... In- I think the last time I physically saw her with my eyes might have been like four or five years ago. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, is, this is from Mpo Mohale, is her hair for your hair? Mm-hmm. Is it for A, 3, B? I think my hair, like my hair's different textures. In the middle, it's like 4, A, 3, C. And then if you come here, it's like uh, 3B, 3A, like around the edges. So it's like three different textures. It's really weird. And my hair textures changed. I think it has to do with my hormones. My hair used to be... Mm, you see that True Love cover there? Yeah, the yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And this GQ cover. Uh-huh. Oh, and that pregnancy, that was the first cover I ever did, the Your Pregnancy cover and the uh-huh. Gracia cover. My yeah. hair doesn't do that anymore. Mm. Unless I dry it up. Yeah. It has to go really like dry. Even the Cosmo cover there. My hair now has, I have to like prepare it for that. Yeah. Whereas before, like I had to just not, oh, sorry. I had to try and not get it to be like that because I was trying to do different types of hairstyles. Look at you at that one. Fuck. The Cosmo. Fuck me. So, um, yeah, that's, 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 in, that's, the question. that's your answer. I have no idea what you just and said. And I've, I've exposed my hair to a lot of water now and better products, yeah. being my own products. And so now it's like, it's growing a lot faster. It's doing that like colored thing a little bit, which is confusing a lot of people. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's doing the curls vibes like so, much easier than it used to before, which, uh, which I, I'm enjoying because it's, um, it's easy to just quickly tie up, but I really miss. And 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 down there is it four A three B as well? <laughs> it looks like whatever you saw when you came out your mama. That's what it looks like. <laughs> uh, okay, Mongezing Malo says top five SA hip hop artists. Give me your top five. Nasty, MT, Casper, Ricky. Ugh, this is so hard. Big Zulu. He's got the biggest song in the country right now. He is. He does. Yeah. But like, let's give him another five years. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, Catalog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and see the industry, how it grows. Um, and the thing is, I, don't, I think people need to really listen to Muesli's music. Mm. I don't know why I'm only naming boys, but I think Muesli, Boiti, and Nadia are doing very well. Yeah. Um, it's just that, and Rouge, you know, I love Ah, uh, Rouge. Rouge. Queen. This is, this is see, so if I'm going to separate them, yeah. it, obviously the girls, at the moment, there's a handful. Yeah. Um, but with the guys, then there's, you know, like, Pro Kid. I actually really loved Proverbs lyricism at some stage. Yeah. Reason. Mm. You know, it's just, it depends on the vibe you're after at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it true that you didn't like uh, the Pearl Tusi song by MT when he came out? No, that's not true. Is it? I thought it was a prank. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because his manager at the time came to live to play the song for me and give me a copy of the lyrics mm. to say, to ask me to approve them because they want me. They want. They wanted my buy-in. Mm, your co-sign. And I thought it was like. Then the song came out. Then the song actually did. Amazing thing. Yeah, it was huge, that song. Yeah. Massive. Uh, ask her, okay, we've, we were talking about light skin privilege. I think we've dealt with that. Mm. Uh, Simpuas Kosana says, she's raising two girls. What's her wish for them? Happiness. Meh. Like, I know it sounds like the pretty girl, the pretty hood song, but happiness means that they've figured out how to find love or love themselves. They figured out what to do with their lives, what legacy they want to leave. Mm. Um, children come here through us, not for us. Wow. So. Fuck, you're very smart, eh? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so my whole thing is like, is like, uh, I just, my job is to keep them alive, yeah. <laughs> you know, until they can figure it out on their own. So I hope, I mean, I hope they heed the advice I've given them and I hope that I've given them the best chance, you know, the best boost in life. Um, but I hope they suffer just a little bit so that they appreciate whatever they get. 100%. Mm. And why, why uh, did you choose to adopt um, the child? Uh, it's a long story. Mm. You know, first of all, it's easy, not, it's not easy, but is, is, how much simpler is it to just make your own? Yeah, right? yeah. Um, but there's so many kids out there, mm. you know, mm. looking for love, looking for a home, looking for somewhere to belong. Yeah. And I can't say Ogushe didn't belong anywhere specifically, but she, no one was in the position to give her everything mm. that I think she needed or that they believe she, because it wasn't like I was went and seeked it out, you know. Mm. I just was in the best position among the people who were in a position. I was in the best position to, to do it. Are you planning on having more kids? Yeah, definitely. Meh. Yeah. When are we starting? As soon as I'm married. <laughs> I'm not making that mistake again. <laughs> I'm like, you know. Right, and I, even if it's not marriage, it's like as, as long as when I find the right partner. Yeah. Um, Renton, it's really distracting me. Can you go take Sunny out of there and like distract him? Thank you. Yeah, Chief. Tando was looking at me. So I was like, there oh. goes my six questions. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I as soon as I find someone to do it with, you know, yeah, someone well, I someone I feel will make a good team, yeah. even if we were not together. Yeah, you know. And where where we at right now? Like, are you dating or are you seeing someone? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. 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 yeah, I was actually thinking if I should. I was like, I wonder if he's gonna ask me. And then I was like, he probably will. And the thing about answering this type of question is. I've never actually really ever announced a relationship. Mm. I just got I just got caught twice. And um I I just never want to be in the position where I have to announce stuff like that. Problems mm. about it like if okay. it's over or oh, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just I don't do the the former so that I don't have to worry about the latter. Yeah. Where do you meet this guy? Because, I mean, like, you know, you're the same age as me, ne? How, which year are you born? Uh, 87. No, I'm not. I'm younger than you. That's it. I'm 88. So I had a chance. Ah. <laughs> you know, I'm democratic about my shit. I'm diplomatic. <laughs> Ain't no color or creed. Yeah. Show me you love me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where do you find a guy, like, you know, because you fucking pearl toozy, man. You know, I don't know what that means. Yeah. I feel like I, I want to be like Kanye. Like, you know, when he says he wants to attend his own concert. Yeah, yeah. So that he can know, like, how dope he is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it must be so dope. So, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I, I just find it hard to date locally now. Oh, is it? Oh, so he's not a local guy? No. Oh. It hasn't been for years now. Shit. Yeah. I just, shit. I can't date in South Africa because I just feel like I'm going to end up being in like a boys night conversation. Mm. Or, yeah. Oh, he dated Paul Tusi. Like for me, relationships are so meaningful. Is it true you dated the Les? No. For real? The Les and I are like brother and sister. Yeah. I know about all his escapades. <laughs> and he's got a lot. Right. <laughs> I know like... And this rumor about me and Les. That's so weird. And the thing is, it's like, I mean, is it really that bad to date Les? Because yeah. sometimes when you denied vehemently, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like something's wrong with it. And yeah. I never wanted my brother to feel like, yeah, you know, there's yeah. something wrong with fucking a nigga like him. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> I was like, ah, man, Les, like, I love Les. And the thing is, I truly love Les. But it's, it's like what you were saying, if you were seen leaving uh, Moja Love with Casper, it's going to be like, ah. Oh, Moja Cafe, Moja yes. Cafe. It's going to be Moja like, ah, oh, you know, you're doing this with Casper, you're doing this, yeah. you're doing that. No, like sometimes you can just be friends with someone. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's, it's, it's annoying. Yeah. Um, but I have never, I, Deleuze and I have never dated. Mm. Um, I'm not looking down at anyone who has dated him mm. because he's an incredible guy. He's great so guy. fun. Yeah. He's got such a great energy. He's yeah. sweet. 
but um, he would drive me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, all right, Vicky says, ask her about her political views and philosophy so we can better understand the crazy things she says sometimes. First of all, which I'm not going to qualify that with an answer because your question is very rude mm. in the way that you've posed it. But what I will say, so fuck you. <laughs> but I, what I will say is that I don't treat politics like sports. Okay. Some people treat like this political party thing as if like they're supporting a soccer team. Yeah. It's like fucking decisions are going to be made about our entire country. Yeah. You know, um, whoever's the best option for me every single four years is the best option for me every single four years. So I would never publicly um, endorse uh, on purpose. You know what I mean? The thing is, I know people. Mm. You know what I mean? But if someone hires me for a gig they're doing for their political party, I know that it may look like something, but if they're paying me well enough, my ass is going to be there. Yeah, Because yeah. I'm there to announce Casper Vest is next. Exactly. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. Yeah. That's your job to do that. It's your job to to do the research and figure things out. Yeah. But if the ruling party is fucking up or if the two oppositions are messing up, like I call every, sorry, I hate flies. So I'll call everybody out. Like I don't have time. Yeah. You know? Are you going to vote for Duduzan Zuma if he runs? I have to check what his politics are. I don't mm, know what his politics are. Nah, nah. Yeah. Did you do the Duduzani challenge? Yeah, in my garden. For real? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. I actually recorded another one. I was getting a massage on the patio. <laughs> <laughs> I saw <soft> flies. <laughs> and I forgot to post it. Anyway. Uh, is a lip, lip sync battle, Africa, ever going to come back? I think that the budgets that are needed to do lip sync battle, um, I guess America is a big, big country. Mm. You know what I mean? With a big entertainment um, drive and industry um that budget is is it's difficult to to really make a show like that in south africa the way it should be made yeah so um it's one of those stories in my opinion um it can come back but it would need like a lot of financial support because you need to fly people from everywhere you need to do the sets you need yeah. to pay me and the entire crew, you need an audience. It's a lot, a lot, it's a lot of production. Yeah. And I think we did a great job initially, but it, I, I feel like it was going to stagnate. Yeah. And I know how to bounce when it's time to bounce. Hey, like, dude, you've been saying that, eh? Like, <laughs> no, like, like the thing is like at live, for example, they were doing that whole thing of you can't work for her and you can't work for her. And I was like, but I saw so-and-so work for her, her. So what's happening? Yeah. And then they finally were like, yeah, okay, now you can. Then I was like, okay. Then I quit. Yeah. <laughs> so I just didn't want to be like in a situation where someone felt like they'd fired me. Is that the same thing that happened at can you? Can I please have like a fatuk, like this thing needs to die because <laughs> it's so disrespectful. <laughs> like one of those dishcloths. No, 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 a dishcloth thing. Was it bothering you that much? Babe, I, I find them unbearable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I cannot, um, especially when it's being this... I'm from Venda, so we're used to these things. Oh, I must have looked like I've seen you like the whole time, yeah. No, not at all, eh? Nah, I did. Just stay, keep it close, keep it close. <laughs> close up. So if it comes back, where did you see now it's gone? Yes. Come and meet your doom, bitch. <laughs> Shit, I didn't even realize it until you started like waving shit. No, no, I can't stand them. Uh, all right, cool. Here's a question here. Uh, Matirisa says, ask her about Serge Ibaka, the LA Clippers baller. What happened to their relationship? Uh, it's none of your business. Who yeah. the fuck is that? I don't even know him. Who's that? He's a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah. And we are friends. Yeah? Yeah. Shit. Damn. Okay. No, man. Guys... You know what the thing is? This is like who you're dating. Ask yeah. me what, so are you still having sex? That the question actually means, are you still having sex with so-and-so? Mm. So when your parents paid school fees, they taught you to go ask people who they fucking. Like, do you understand? Like, mm. it's such a, such an invasive thing. You mm. know what I mean? Asking about, are you in a relationship? Yes, I am. Mm. Mm. The thing of like, I just, because also that relationship, I never publicly... Announced. Like I got dessert. caught in a picture moment, mm -mm. <laughs> like with a fan, and then the other person was at the back. And um, 
And um, it's, it's just, I find it just because of with the future being so uncertain. Yeah. It's difficult to have these conversations. So, yeah. Yeah. Fuck, man. Pearl Tussi, this has been amazing. Fuck, I feel like I've known you, like, I've known you all my life, bro. I also like, feel like you're so that. amazing, man. Thank your energy, you. I love your energy. I remember the first time I met you, first time ever, <laughs> was at uh, Devon July, and you were going to a marquee, and I saw you. I'm like, yo, bro. You're like, yo, what's up? I'm like, please tell Fat Joe I love him, man. You're working with Fat Joe at the time. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to Fat Joe. Ah, that's my nigga. How good is he? Like, and the thing is, a lot of the way I am. You know that your mama thing came from Fat Joe? For real. But look at patriarchy. Yeah. There's a fly in your thing. Oh, Wait, don't, don't. Ah, oh, I was going <laughs> to. <laughs> no, you can't hit me with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, he, he it was he, he'd always be like, Yo mama. And I'd be like, Oh, my mama's dead. How could you? <laughs> and then he'd be like, I don't care, because your mama. And then I just I just caught that. Yeah. And I just never was able to let it go. Yeah. And I also felt like I'm someone's mom. How dare you? Yeah. So your mom is equal, like, like, how come your mom and dad doesn't get to be had? How, how was how was working the fetch? I'd love to work with them, man. You just learn how to roll with the punches. Yeah. Oh, I thought she saw the fly. You just learn how to roll with the punches and and live, love, and make the mistakes in a broadcast like work and have fun, you know? Um, you learn how that kind of tennis... Mm, thing the dance. Supposed to, you know what the I mean? Dance. The dance, yeah. yeah. Like, I didn't realize at the time, but sometimes he would just argue with me just for the sake of yeah, arguing. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. For the sake of like... <laughs> and I'd be like... <laughs> Uh, anyway, but it was a, a great learning experience. I remember I worked with him like at Metro. Uh, I didn't get paid because he offered to pay me. Oh, shit. And then I was like, mm, but I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't deserve money. How do you work at Metro and not get paid? Sure. Crazier things have happened. Mm. And um, yeah, I was, but the thing is they hadn't offered to, mm. he had brought me on. Oh, okay. And then they offered me a contract the following year, which is kind of them. Yeah. And um, yeah. I That's did, when you I, said juices. <laughs> did, no, 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 no. They, I then worked for them for I think okay. another two years and uh, then things got extremely disrespectful. Yeah. And, um, and then that's when I left. You've mentioned respect. I've lost count. Like that's a big thing for you. It ne? is a very big thing for me. Ne. But it's also like just a word, my friends. Like, <laughs> like, Why don't you respect me? Because <laughs> if you respect someone, you wouldn't do certain things. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And if you do, you would you would do certain things. Aren't you glad I didn't ask you about Robert Morrell? I actually don't mind talking about Robert. Oh, for real. I don't mind talking about people that the people know about. You know. Like, yeah. Again, Robert and I didn't announce our relationship. We got caught. At Zimbali having lunch, you know, yeah. some rude person took a photo and posted it and sent it to the papers. Um, Robert and I had a great relationship. Also another great guy, another great mm, broadcaster. Incredible person, kind person. Um, it just for reasons that we would rather not talk about, you know, mm. things didn't work. Mm. And that wasn't our intention, but that's what happened. And you need to know when to leave mm. situations no matter how much you want to stay, mm. when something is not good for you, don't die in it, mm. you know? Learn from it and move on. Mm. And alchemize that love. You know what alchemy means? Mm -hmm. It means turning, um, I think it's, oh, was it wood into gold? Mm. I, I forgot, but it's, so I love using the word because it's about take something that is average, mediocre, yeah. you know, bare yeah. minimum and turn it into something beautiful, mm. you know? And um, in all my relationships, I feel like that's been the situation that I get to a point, and I'm not saying that I get bored easily or whatever. I get to a point where I'm like, because every relationship is supposed to be a consideration of, is this the rest of my life? Yeah. And when you get to a point where you say no, and you're still having a good time, hmm. you're wasting time, hmm. you know? And... Um, Shit, you're right. Yeah, you have to, you have to learn... When you become uncomfortable in any situation, it's time to grow. When I became uncomfortable in my other home, I knew it was time to move and grow and go to a bigger place. Whenever you get uncomfortable in a job and things start becoming too difficult when they were easy before, mm. it's time you're, you're, you're doing too much now. You need to level mm. up. You need to grow. You need to spread your wings. The egg that you were in, the cocoon that you were in needs to break open now. And some people are so desperate to stay 
comfortable and safe and secure that they never grow. Mm. You know? And that's so sad for me. And for me, discomfort and hardship is a welcome guest because they are usually the ones there to teach you something, the mm. most important lessons. Yeah. Yeah. And those lessons you must accept with open arms as hard as it may be because usually it is time to grow. When you're uncomfortable, it only mean, for me, it only means one thing. It means it's time to either adjust or grow or move on. Leave open that. I've been opening up this industry. Don't be talking to me. Yeah. I've been leaving gigs for y'all niggas for how long? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've never been stingy with work. Yeah. I've never been emotional. Like, I always believe that, like, even if I thought something belonged to me, I believe, like, God would not give another bitch my shit. Yeah. You know? God wouldn't take my gift and give it to someone else. Just the same way he won't take someone else's gift and give it to me. Mm, yeah. So if, as, it doesn't matter how hard I prayed for it. It wasn't mine. Mm. And I need to celebrate the next person. Mm. And the whole envy and, and evil shit that happens in this industry is because people believe certain things belong to them when mm. they didn't. And you need to learn to let go. Mm. And for me, that's been what has helped me grow in this industry. Letting go because it's time to catch something new, something Fuck. bigger. You know what I mean? That's so profound. If you hold on to the same balloon, let's say you're floating on, you, if you won't go higher until you grab mm. a bigger one, you know? You're climbing. Leave some other people to float as you go along, you know? And then something, unfortunately, Kevin Spacey taught me this. I know it's awkward to talk about him, but he taught me a great lesson. I mean, I've been needing to round up now. No, not at all. Oh. No, no, no. He taught me a great lesson. And the great lesson was you've got to send the elevator back down. Mm. And some people want to be the only ones on top. And mm. we all get that feeling because you're worried that someone's going to knock you out. You're mm. meant to be knocked out. It means the world is not evolving and growing if, mm. if you don't have to sidestep one day for, for a new Fuck. it person. You know, that's meant to happen. But unless you keep rising, you don't have to worry about who's coming behind you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Shit. That's so profound. Um, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this, is my, this is my general everyday thought. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Pearl of wisdom. Pearl of wisdom. Drop the gem. <laughs> Just dropping them shits. All right, cool. So where are we at now? What are we doing? What's, what's coming up? What's I'm happening? selling these beautiful candles. Oh, you're selling candles? For black rose and soap. I'm yeah. going to separate them now. I think the price point is a bit straggly for me. It's a bit high. Yeah. So, but candle, these candles last like over 60 hours of burn time. My woman loves candles. They smell amazing and they're handmade. They're a luxury Are product. you seriously selling candles? And soap. I love Fuck. candles and soap. I love skin and I love aroma. I love, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no wonder I hate flies so much. And um, the hair products are still doing incredibly well. We're actually celebrating our five-year anniversary. Wow. How many businesses last that long? Not a lot. Era, mm -hmm. black pearl hair. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, because it's easy to think you can sell stuff in this industry, you know, yeah. but it's hard to actually sell Some, stuff. Yeah. Especially if it's your own. There's lots of competition, yeah. yeah. And um, there's that... Um, I don't know when this is going to go on air, but I'm about We're to... We're putting go. it this Thursday. This Thursday. Oh, I'm about to... Go shoot something very far away from here. Oh, wow. Um, Look at you. No, the thing is, when they said Queensland was cancelled, yeah. I moped maybe for three days. Yeah. You know, I was sad yeah. because Queensland for me was a gift mm. to women mm. from me mm. and the production. It was like the power of the show is not in who doesn't get it. Mm. It's who gets it. And, mm. and, and making women understand how strong, powerful, and incredible they are. Internationally, like, yo, like I had phone calls from, you know, those yeah, people. Yeah. Like, what are they even thinking? Mm. But for me, what they think and what I think, I'm not a decision maker. Mm. What am I going to waste my time worrying about that for? So we had the conversation we needed to have. We had our, you know, cancellation fees. Mm -hmm. hey, and that was nice. <laughs> I was like, oh my! <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. It was obviously, it, it, it wasn't fun. Yeah. But I booked another gig. Yeah. The time, I, the time it had been postponed again to be shooting, I'm already out to go shoot something else. You've got to, to move, move on. on. Yeah. When are we singing? Is it next year, ne? Obviously. I, those things don't worry mm. me. I just need to go shoot, shoot, get my bag, and go get another gig. I don't yeah. worry about those type of details because I'll stress myself. And music? Is the music thing serious? Or are you just fucking around? What do you mean? <laughs> Didn't you do a track with, with a mosquito? I've done a track with Cabello. 
Is it? Yeah, Puga love. Like, oh, Puga love. He called me in the studio one day. He was like, I just need you to chant this. And I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's just similar to La La Costa. <laughs> but back then, more like, you know, those high school chants. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did a guy a, a song with a guy called Demi Crane in Olamide in mm. Nigeria. Mm. But I have like a really small section of it. Um, and Oskiro. Is there another one? So my whole thing about it is that if it keeps inviting me this way, I, I don't want to say too much. When things are special to me, I don't like talking mm. about them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Dude, man, this has been fucking amazing. Have man. you had fun? This has been amazing. I think it's Wait, probably... let me ask my assistant, what else am I doing? Yeah. Oh, my outdoor furniture just arrived. Hey, bedroom. cheers. Uh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just the hair stuff. I'm still Europa art shoes. You see, I'm wearing this preview full Karl Lagerfeld moment. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just... Being a mom, growing, you yeah, know, doing yeah. what I need to do. Yeah. Um, and I'm just so excited to get back on set, I won't lie. It's, yeah. been, it's been a minute. Yeah. And um, I, I can't wait to see what comes next, just like everybody else. Uh, so in closing, what do you want to be remembered as? When it's all said and done. Just like, even if I wasn't the tip of the spear, but like tip of the spear of the African legacy, like in entertainment. Like, mm. That'd be dope. Legacy is a big, it's a big it's part for you, know? It's what you leave. It's, it's what, you know that song by Beyonce, I was here. Mm. Like, how do we, how are we going to know your bitch ass was here? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I want bitches to know I was here. <laughs> I did some shit on this planet. Yeah. yeah. You know, I bowed out, said, peace out, niggas. Yeah. Go fuck some shit up in heaven right now. Fuck, you man. know, like that for me is 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 the ultimate thing. I want to be great, remembered as a great mother. I want to mm. remember. I want to be remembered the way I remember my mom. Actually, mm. my mom was an incredible woman. And um, the point is, I want to be left with. I want to leave this planet with nothing else left to give. Mm. There must be like nothing. I mustn't even be able to blink. Yeah. That's how much potential I have left. I, I'm mm. unable to even blink. In terms of, I've, I want to be the most, have the most poverty-stricken grave. There must be no potential, no riches. Because you know they say graves are probably the richest places because so many dead ideas, mm. so many, you know what I mean? Mm. So much potential laying there because mm. people weren't able to fulfill. Um, people didn't believe in themselves. So I want to... I want to just be like, there's nothing left for me to do here, niggas. I need to go. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Fuck, bro. You're amazing, man. I don't know you're this amazing, eh? What do you mean? No wonder Zinte loves you, eh? It makes sense now, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. She's pretty intense herself, you know? Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It makes sense. Because I, just... I thought it was an industry friendship, you know, vibe. No, 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 no. We lived together. Oh, for real? Yeah. When she was... When she was a tomboy. <laughs> no, she was building her house still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was in New York. So I just said, go stay in my house. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not an amazing house. It yeah. was just an interim moment till I find what I want. But um, you, you can save money on rent and keep building your damn house. Yeah. And then when I came back, we were hardly in the same space because we were both working so much at the time. Um, she was shooting that thing show about a village. Um. That, do you guys know that show? What show is that? Yeah, Mesh. Something about a village, man. Is anyway, it a series or something? It was like a thing where they go into, people go back to their hood. And oh, I know. I don't, I don't so know. So she was show. busy yeah. go driving back to Newcastle at the time to shoot that. And um, we just grew close. We actually started growing close in New York. In fact, the industry forced us to be friends, the way they just made us friends. Mm. We were already speaking, but mm. we weren't like, ah, oh, bosom buddy. Like, yeah. We just stood for the same things. Mm. And I think that at the time, everyone was calling her to be like, ish girl, are you okay? Wow, I can't believe this mm. is happening to you. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you will not treat this girl like this. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and um, and I think I think that might have meant a lot to, to her at the her, time yeah. because no one actually publicly put themselves on the line. Yeah, and for me, it was it wasn't even about who I hate, who I love. It, there was none of that at the time. There wasn't an I hate this person, I love this person. No, it was just to think about. Guys, this is wrong. Mm. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Acting like this is okay. Mm. And um, then we started. 
being like hanging out, supporting each other's stuff. And then we were living together. And that's how our friendship blossomed. Yeah. And the thing is, it, it's, it has depth emotionally and the relationship is strong because we have so many of the same values. Mm. And you know, we've never had a fight. Like, I'm not talking to you fight. Yeah. Because at that moment, like, oh, friend, that hurt me. Why would you say that? Oh, wow. <laughs> We're like, oh, friend, no, I didn't want to hurt you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead of like, yeah, she hurt me. You know what she said? Yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah. Like, friend, why would you say something like that? That's so heartfelt. <laughs> then she'll be like, oh, friend, I didn't mean to hurt you. It's, it's a very like, yeah. it's, it's one of the most beautiful friendships I've ever been in. Cool. Is everything good? Oh, it's going to make a peep sound. Ah, niggas no, 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 Yeah, hey, man. This isn't top billing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. My very fancy outdoor furniture is arriving because <laughs> I'm hosting the next Wet and Wild party this Thursday when the show comes out. Cheers. At my house because Zinta's birthday is coming up, motherfuckers. And we need to celebrate. <laughs> oh, fuck. Listen, Pearl, man, this has been amazing. I fucking love you, man. I adore you. Oh, thank you. you. Like, this has been an inspiration for me. Really? You know, it took so long to do this interview it's and I can tell why it needed to be now. Yeah, it, it was the timing. Was yeah, great. man. Now I can see your house. Like, this is an inspiration, man. Thank you so much. And hopefully one day we'll be neighbors, you know? No, you know, that's, that's very possible. You just have to... Babe, spend more time with me. Nah. You have to just manifest. Yeah. You have to think it. You have to believe it. You have to dream it. You have to work to... You have to act like it's going to happen or uh, that it's already happened. Mm. You have to do that. Yeah. You must just go to Property 24 and just... Mm. Just, just for fun. Mm. This is nice. Like. Yeah. It's nice, like, oh, prices don't bend down. Oh, that's interesting. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. You just have to expose yourself. Like, I'm hardly on Twitter. And honestly, when I'm in Instagram, I'm just watching my own stories over and over again. <laughs> I don't have time for other people's mm. content as much because I'm, I, I think I'm quite self-absorbed. Mm. I'm not self-obsessed. Mm. I'm just... I'm just minding my own business, mm. you know? Because I also don't want to be watching too much of what other people are doing. But seriously, just manifest. Mm. Just think it. Mm. Believe it. You mm. deserve it. Fuck. You do. Yeah. Yeah. I deserve you as well, man. You deserve... I'm here right now. Am I not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been Podcast and Chill, man. We are here. Bye, <laughs> <laughs>